all world champions are admired, but Mikhail Tal was truly loved by the world of chess. Hans Rey. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you another hyper aggressive attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Argentine chess master Julio Bolbochan who won Argentine chess championship in 1946 and 1948. This game was played in 1966 at Havana Chess Olympiad. This is the same chess Olympiad during which Tal's health was subjected to another severe test. In a nightclub he was hit on the head with a bottle. He was obliged to miss the first four rounds but the subsequent 13 games brought him 12 points. If you are interested in this incident in more detail, I will make a separate video about it but meanwhile let's proceed with our game. This game was played in round 12 and Tal who was playing with the white pieces opened up with e4. Bolbochan responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, e6, knight c3, knight d6, black goes for Scheveningen variation, bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, bishop e7, and queen e2. White is not only preparing castling queen side, but also by putting the queen on e2 square, he is not losing a precious tempo on playing f3 and is keeping the eye on g4 square, not allowing any knight g4 jumps. And also later, white queen can support the advance of the g pawn. Black castled king side, bishop b3, a6, white castled queen side. Queen a5, well in here usually black is playing queen c7 or protecting the knight and preparing b5, but in our game we have queen a5 and later we will see that the queen on a5 is somewhat misplaced. King b1, a prophylactic move and rook e8. Well, this is too slow. It was better to proceed with the development, play bishop d7 or protect the knight, prepare b5 or black can even capture on d4 and then put the bishop on c6. This is of course better, but instead we have rook e8. In some lines black can put his bishop on f8 strengthening the king side, but this is too slow and passive. Rook g1, bishop d7, and there we have it, g4 is on the board, although I have to tell you that Tal could even go for g4 straight away. But putting the rook on g1 later can be useful and white can quickly switch it into the attack. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop c6, g5. So finally black brought into life this bishop d7, bishop c6 idea, but lost the precious time on playing rook e8. Knight d7, and this time we have rook d3. In some cases white wants to switch his rook into the attack from the third rank, although Stockfish says that h4, h5 is even better, but in our game we have rook d3 which is also a good continuation. g6, h4, knight c5, right now the rook on d3 is under attack, but Tal decided to push forward his h-pawn. Who cares about this rook? And believe it or not, but black didn't even touch the rook and instead won the bishop on b3. And yes, this is a right choice because in this position the bishop is more useful than the rook. For example, if you go for knight takes d3, then after queen takes d3, if you move like bishop f8, then after h takes g6, f takes g6. So the bishop is suddenly becoming very useful and white can proceed with the attack by playing queen h3. Not only eyeballing on h7, but also attacking the pawn on e6. And if you move like bishop d7, then rook e1, if rook e7, then f4 followed by f5, and this is really a very dangerous attack. Uh, that's why in our game after h5 we have knight takes b3. A takes b3, e5. So black is kicking away this dark squared bishop from the long diagonal, and now the bishop is temporarily blocking the third rank. Queen c7, meanwhile black wants to consolidate his position. Bishop d2, rook a d8. Rook h1, bishop f8, and queen g4. Well, this is too slow. Playing rook d h3 is better. If rook d7, then h takes g6, and if f takes g6, then queen c4 check can follow. If 
King H8, then F4, and then F5. Yeah, this is really very scary. But instead we have Queen G4, B5. So in return, Black wants to launch a counter attack, but of course White is faster. Queen H4. So instead of doubling up his rooks on the H file, Tal decided to put the Queen on H4 and use it as an attacking force. B4, Knight D1, D5. Blick is bringing into life a very standard idea in Sicilian defense. By playing d5, Blick wants to open up the position and create counter-attacking chances. And this is actually a critical part in the game. If you play a move like e takes d5, then Blick is not only managing to repel White's attack, but even stands better. Uh, that's why instead of going for a move like e takes d5, or I don't know, rook h3, Tal played a very powerful knight e3 move. He's sacrificing the pawn on e4, but his idea is simple, to bring the knight on g4 and then exploit the weaknesses of black's camp. He takes e4, so black accepted the pawn sacrifice. Right now the rook is hanging, but who cares? Don't forget that with the white piece is playing the magician from Riga and he proceeds with his knight maneuver, knight g4 with a devastating knight f6 threat. The rook is untouchable because of an imminent checkmate. Knight king g7, then after h take g6, yeah, black king is in a mating net. How are you going to fight back? Just no way out, or if king h8, then even this can't help black. h take g6 is coming, if h6, then g7 check. And then g takes h6, white is winning. Yeah, and now if I move like bishop f8, then queen g5, and the game is over. You can't even move away your bishop and free the 8th rank. There is queen g7 checkmate. Let's go back. In our game after knight g4, we have f5. Uh, of course, in here, white can even capture and pass on, but Tal decided to announce a check from f6. King f7, h takes g6 check. King e6, and knight takes e8, rook takes e8, g takes h7, this is a total destruction guys, a massacre, no one cares about this rook, you know? White wants to go for a queen promotion, bishop g7, black is covering the h8 square, and rook h3, these rooks are going to be very useful on the h file, bishop d5, a desperation, black could already resign, queen h5, not only hitting on e8, but also queen g6 is the threat. King d7, and in here Tal made a move and black resigned. Can you find his next move? Ready? Well, that's actually very simple. Think that you found this move very quickly. Queen takes e8 and black resigned. If king takes e8, then white is going for a queen promotion. And then black is also going to lose his queen. If bishop f7, then rook takes f7, and rook h7, the game is over. That's why after this marvelous queen takes e8 move, black resigned. That rook e8 was definitely a dubious move, and very quickly black faced serious problems. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, which is also taken from Mikhail Tal's game, and the task is to find how Mikhail Tal proceeded with the attack. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care!